Hey everybody, welcome to another N365.video SharePoint Short. This is David Warner. Today we're going to focus talking about modern SharePoint pages, specifically highlighting layouts and white space. Now there are a ton of super cool features that come as part of the modern page editing experience, and we're going to take a look at a couple of those today. There have also been some extremely varied opinions around one of the modern experience page layout details, which is the fixed width surrounding our web part content sections. And then the white space that you may see on the left or right of that content area is a result of that fixed width. So we're going to consider the following topics in this video. We'll take an overview of the modern layout options, see how they differ from classic, what the improved features are. Along with that, we're going to consider and take a look at that web part width area, the fixed width content area that we spoke about. And then we're going to compare this to some industry leading websites whose business is consumption. We want to see how some of these other industry leading websites have made the choice around content width. We'll analyze some screen resolution statistics to see what the leading resolutions are within the industry. And then we'll wrap it up with a final review, tying everything together. Before we demo the modern experience page layout features, I wanted to highlight a couple of points about modern experience page editing. The first is that we have infinite scaling of web part sections. Now what this means is if you're familiar with the classic experience is once you created your page layout in the classic experience, it required programmatic editing to be able to increase or decrease the number of web part zones on your layout. No longer necessary in the modern experience. It's very cool. You have full control as an editing user to increase, decrease, change sections from one column to three column to two column, etc. Now the one point that's important to note is that you can't have nested sections and I'll, I'll highlight this in the demo, but if you have a two column and within the left column of that two column, you wanted to put in another two column section, you can't do that. You could do that in classic because you had full control of the HTML. I think it's a very small thing. I don't think that it's going to affect negatively the user experience that we're able to provide within a page in the modern experience, but I did want to highlight it. Let's jump over to the demo. We'll start with the blank and empty modern experience page. I'll go ahead and put the page into edit mode and we'll see how we can make modifications to the sections that are available for our web parts. We'll add a section, modify a section, remove a section. We'll get the full experience of the control that we can have by just simply editing the page. So I'll go ahead and click on the edit button here over on the right. Now our page is in edit mode. I can add a web part to the uh, default section if I would like. That can be done here. I can also add a section. If I click on the section addition button over here, you can see the different options I have to add a section. So let's go ahead and add a three column section. We now see that there's three columns, just as we chose. Each of these columns can have a web part added to it. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and make modifications to this section, I click on the edit section button. This opens up the panel over here on the right where I can change from three columns to two columns. I can go one third left or one third right. You can see how easy and quick it is for us to make modifications to the sections. If I want to add an additional section, I can do that. I'll go ahead and put three columns back in. So now you can see how infinitely available the editing experience is. Now, if I wanted to delete a section, that's just as easy as adding one. We go over to the section editing area here on the left and we click on delete section. It'll ask us to confirm, select yes, and now we see we're back to our original sections that we had defined. Now, one of the things that I had mentioned on the slides that you can't do, at least as of yet, is you can't nest sections within another section. So let's go ahead and modify our section here. We'll go ahead and edit the section and let's make it a two column section. Now let's say in this right section here, on the right hand side, we wanted to put another two column section. So we've got an outer two column, and then within this right area, we wanted to put another two column. That's not something we can currently do in the modern experience. And again, I don't think that it's that detrimental. It doesn't take away from our creativity or power as authors. It is just a, a difference from uh, being compared to the classic experience. Now, what we really can't see here on a page like this that's devoid of any content is the white space showing up on the left and right. So we're gonna swap over to another page that's got a, a bunch of demo content that's going to make it easier for us to understand what that white space may look like. Now this is a page that was populated with demo content when I created my site. I just used a, an out of the box communication topic site and it included some of these web parts on our page for us. Now what you can see is we've got a lot of space on the left and the right. If I use some drawing tools here on the screen, 
you can see the content is being restricted to this area. Now this is a 1,284 pixel wide content area at the present time for SharePoint. I'm on a 1,980 wide resolution monitor. So it gives me a lot of white space here on the left and the right. And the question is, that's a lot of empty space. Can't I use that? Is that going to be perceived as a negative area by my users? Is it going to draw away from the intent of my page? Now these are valid questions to ask. And if all we were to do was to look at it at this resolution on this page and see the white space on the left and right not being utilized, someone might say, I want to use that. SharePoint is restricting me from using that. To really determine if this is truly a restriction though, we have to look deeper. We can't just simply look at it at one resolution on one monitor. So let's take a few minutes and look at those industry leading websites that I had mentioned earlier in the video. All that you see on the screen, Amazon, Apple, eBay, and Microsoft use a fixed width content area to ensure controlled containment of the white space that shows up on a page. You can't control the resolution that users come in with. They could have big 32 inch monitor with high resolution. You can't control that. You can control where the white space shows up. And these are industry leading companies that actually do the exact same thing as SharePoint. The second site that we're going to look at is ESPN. Now, I chose ESPN because this closely matches the design and makeup of a SharePoint corporate intranet. And we'll see what those details are. Let's jump over and take a look. Now, I have a browser open here with four tabs. We're going to take a look at Amazon, Apple, eBay, and Microsoft. What we're going to find is that they all have one thing in common. They all use fixed width. Here in the case of Amazon, they're using a fixed width. It's a little wider than SharePoint, so you have less white space on the left and right but they're still fixed width. If we move to Apple, we can see they're using even more space on the left and right for their white space. Their content for this homepage has even less content area defined. eBay is no different. They're using what appears to be a little closer to SharePoint. There's still white space. They're using a fixed width. And finally, Microsoft. They're using quite a bit. There's very little white space on the left and right, but it is still a fixed width. What does this all mean? The fixed width allows these industry leading websites to contain the white space. Now, what do I mean by contain the white space? What I mean is that there's always the potential for white space. As our monitors get bigger and a resolution on our computers increase, there is always potential that someone is going to come in with a large monitor and a high resolution, and that is going to induce white space. Fixed width allows us to ensure control of where that white space shows up. Now let's take a look at one more website that closely resembles the makeup and the type of content that we might see in a SharePoint site. To me, ESPN is a fantastic site to compare to SharePoint. We've got small pieces of data. On the left, ESPN, subscribe now, ESPN plus home. On the right, you've got top headlines. In the middle, you've got some more robust content like a photo and a tagline. This is content that is very similar to what we see in SharePoint, small little bursts of information that we want to induce our users to click on and go somewhere else and learn more. I feel like this is a very well-balanced website. Now what's interesting though is you'll notice they're using fixed width as well. You see a lot of white space on the left and right. In fact, they're using about 44 pixels less than SharePoint. 1240 pixels is their content width. But for the sake of comparison, Let's work some CSS magic and convert this page to be full width. We're gonna make it 100% liquid. It's going to conform to the width of my browser. So we removed any width restrictions. We've converted this to be a full width website. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, it's horrible. It's distracting. My eyes don't know where to focus first. They don't know if I look to the left, do I look to the right? Do I focus on the photo and then go left or go right? What we have here is a perfect example of uncontrolled white space. Now, the reason I call this uncontrolled white space is simply because if I let my content grow from the left of my browser to the right of my browser, no matter how big the monitor is or how high our resolution is, I can't control where that white space shows up. All that additional white space that we see in the left column on a smaller resolution, a smaller monitor might not be a problem. But as we see our increasing of monitors and resolutions in this scenario, I have no control. When using the fixed width though, we can control where that white space is showing up. And it's showing up on the left and the right of our content. 
So let's jump back and take one more look at this page in the fixed width scenario. The concern may still stand that the additional white space we're seeing on the left and right might be distracting. Not as much as when we go full width, but I still don't like all that white space. Well, let's take a look at the resolution statistics that have been gathered around the internet and see if what we're looking at is more of the exception to the rule or the standard. What you're seeing are the screen resolution statistics for the last year, from November 2017 to November 2018. Each color on the chart represents a resolution. Now I'll admit, when I first looked at these stats, the top resolution surprised me. You can see that at almost 24% for the entire year, 360 by 640 is the largest use resolution. At first this confused me and then I realized, oh yeah, phones, we're all surfing on our mobile devices. Then as we look at the second highest resolution, 1366 by 768. This is still significantly lower than the 1900 plus resolution that I'm running at in these demos. And then number three we see is 1920 by 1080, and that comprises about 10%, and that's a significant increase in resolution from 1366. After that, though, it goes back down to what appears to be a mobile device. Then we see five and six is coming in at 1440 wide and 1536 wide. And this makes up 50% of the resolutions tracked on this chart. Then, if we look at all of the resolutions that are tracked at the bottom of the chart, there's 13 total that actually have values. We exclude unknown, we exclude other. 13 total values. Nine of them are 1366 or below. Nine out of 13. That's a significant value. So I think it's safe to say that 1366 is a reasonable number to look and see how does our sites look at 1366. So let's jump back over to our demo page with sample content and let's use some browser tools to shrink the page down to 1366 pixels wide and see what kind of white space then we are dealing with on the left and right of the content area. We're back now on our sample content page and in case you're wondering, I went ahead and added some custom CSS to provide a darker background color for our content area. This allows us to understand where the white space on the left and right of the content area begins and ends a little easier as we adjust the width of our content. So what I'm going to do is turn on the developer tools that are part of the Chrome browser. And inside these tools, there's a mobile emulation control right down here in the lower left. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Now what that does, it allows us to grow and shrink the visible area of our page. It lets us emulate responsive design. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here and I'm going to change our resolution to 1366. Now we can see the white space on the left and right of our content area is barely even noticeable. Whereas with my large 1900 plus resolution on this large monitor, high res screen, it was noticeable. It was much more noticeable. But now at a smaller resolution that we see tends to cover a larger percentage of internet users and their resolutions being used out there today, it's not as noticeable at all. So to me, this tells me that the concern that's been shown around how much white space is being displayed on these larger resolutions might not actually be so concerning after all. Thanks for watching my video today. Here's my contact information as well as links to my blog where you can find more videos on Office 365 and SharePoint. Thanks again.